Hi friends, it's Veronica Vax, naturopathic physician, happily retired. Today we will continue our conversation on the topic of metaplasia. This is going to be part two, and it will be continuation of this, uh, how to reverse metaplasia part one. The reason I decided to elaborate on this topic, because the first video created a lot of questions, a lot of um, uh, emails, and um, several clients that I decided to take. But what I realized in conversation with those people, they, they do not understand what's the cause. And the reason they don't understand, because it's not clear in my video. Let's talk about two clinical cases that are interesting and representative of that. Number one, a middle-aged male went for colonoscopy and then gastroscopy and was discovered that he has intestinal metaplasia in the stomach. Second is um, middle-aged female, she went for colonoscopy and for gastroscopy was discovered that she has metaplasia in the esophagus. In the first clinical case, conversation with the, with the male started about metaplasia, but then I quickly realized that the problem is actually not in the stomach. He has long-standing history of um, irritable bowel syndrome that comes with gas, bloating, constipation, and occasional diarrhea. Uh, we started to talk about irritable bowel syndrome that needs to be, uh, diet needs to be changed, foods that can cause the irritable bowel syndrome needs to be identified and eliminated. And the conversation was back and forth and he kind of understood that at first. But then after 10 minutes of conversation, he looked at me and he said, you know, you're trying to solve my constipation, but my metaplasia in the stomach, at that moment I realized, he does not understand what's the cause of metaplasia. So second clinical case is a female. She went for uh, gastroscopy and was diagnosed with uh, metaplasia in the esophagus. She left the office with prescription of PPIs and she did not plan to take that. When we had a conversation, we talked about her acid reflex. Turns out she has a mild acid. She has a mild gastritis, but I said it needs to be solved. And uh, I started to talk about my videos, eight most common causes of acid reflex, you need to see them, you need to identify your cause, you need to change your diet, make sure that you chew your food, and that, then, uh, and she agreed about all of that, and she said that, you know, maybe uh, it, it, there, there is a room to work with that, and then she said, you know, my gastritis and my acid reflex do not bother me that much. Um, acid reflex is kind of like I can take times three or four times per week, no big deal. The same with the gastritis, but this metaplasia really bothers. The diagnosis is really bothers me. Again, I realize person does not understand what's the cause of metaplasia. So let's go to PowerPoint presentation and let's talk about it, elaborate it on on that. So. Um, I have this in the first video, I have the slide causes of metaplasia, bacterial, viral, host and environmental factors. I decided to substitute that slide with this one. Causes of metaplasia, bacterial, viral infection, food, and also chemicals such as herbicides, pesticides, and drugs. What are those have in common? And the answer is in, one in common denominator for all of them is inflammation. Inflammation is underlying cause of metaplasia. When the insult happened to epithelial layer of the digestive tract, um, then immune response start to develop. How do we know about that? It's because uh, pathologists can see on the, neck, on the microscope that there, is there are inflammatory cells right here. So an immune response presents itself like first stage is mucus production. So we start to produce more mucus to protect epithelial cells from the damaging effect of the chemical or bacterial or viral infection. If that is not enough, 
then immune system heavily get involved and we start to produce macrophages and, and lymphocytes. Now, uh, so you can ask me a question, how food can create inflammation in the digestive tract? Example, lactose intolerance. People who do not tolerate uh, dairy products, when they eat them, they will have gas, bloating, and diarrhea. All of that is inflammation. Drugs. How do drugs will produce inflammation? We don't need to go too far. Look at the ibuprofen. On the label of our ibuprofen, it says right there, do not take without food can create uh, inflammation and bleeding in the digestive tract. When the ibuprofen end up in the digestive tract, it's basically scrape the chemically the epithelial layer. And under the epithelial layer, we have blood vessels. Blood vessels get exposed. Ibuprofen will damage them. They will start to bleed. And that's where the bleeding is happening. So inflammation is underlying problem of metaplasia. Now, let's go to the blackboard and um, let's actually talk about those two cases that I presented earlier. I already pre-draw my favorite picture of digestive tract. This is the mouse with the teeth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and we go into the bathroom right here. So the first person is middle-aged male that presented with irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, and inflama inflammation or metaplasia. I will write metaplasia in the stomach. So he has metaplasia right here, meaning that he has inflammation right here. But because he has a long history of inflammation in the small and large intestine, he has a constipation here. So he has inflammation in the large and small intestine. That means and you hear me that, talking about it all the time, that our digestive tract is continuous pipe. If there is inflammation in one part, eventually the inflammation will go into the other part. So it will go into the stomach. That's one point. The second point, when there is inflammation here, food is not readily digested and absorbed uh, through the small intestine. It will stay here, will contribute more to inflammation. And because it will stay here, so it will prevent food from moving from the stomach into the small intestine. Food will stay here and contribute to inflammation here. When there is a food stagnation in the small and large intestine, dysbiosis develop. So that's why I told this pa patient, before we are starting to solve metaplasia, it's a good idea to deal with irritable bowel syndrome and dysbiosis. Second person is uh, with acid reflex, I will write GERD and then develop metaplasia in the esophagus. What that means that, so she had GERD and she also had a little bit inflammation in the stomach, inflammation here, acid goes <clears throat> up from the, uh, from the stomach into esophagus. Acid is a chemical that creates a damage here in the esophagus. Damage is inflammation. Inflammation means that it gets converted into um, metaplasia. So we need to solve the problem with the gastritis, and we need to identify the cause of the acid reflex. And I have a video on the topic, eight common causes of acid reflex. So she needs to look at those videos and try to identify why she had she has an acid reflex. So the, I hope you understand the point that I try to really drive into. So if here is the uh, metaplasia, all right? Metaplasia in this case happened because of the hydrochloric acid goes into the esophagus. It goes there because patient has acid reflex. Acid reflex is multifactorial disease, could be possible eight causes. So you need to identify the cause of your acid reflex, deal with that. Then there is no GERD, there is no acid. Inflammation in the esophagus will subside. In other words, you can see the progression, right? Here is metaplasia. It's developed in several stages. So acid 
gerd uh, inflammation so we need to work backward we need to solve underlining problem okay guys i hope it is clear if it's still not 100 percent clear please write to me i will elaborate on more on that and um, make a next video thank you so much like subscribe bye bye for now